I usually don't do a video that talks about hair growing techniques because I feel like most of them are hype. <laughs> But this next one is the real, it's called the Greenhouse Effect or GHE. I'm Genuine Nard and this is everything I've learned about growing my natural type 4 hair. Please subscribe, like, share, comment, and thanks. Had y'all ever heard of this, the Greenhouse Effect? It is something I'd never heard of until I started researching it and it's become three of my favorite things which is cheap, effective, and easy. So let's watch. We talked before about hair porosity. If you're low porosity, you're always trying to open up that cuticle enough to let moisture in for deep hydration. And if you're high porosity, you're always trying to repair the cuticle allowing it to relax and close enough to retain some moisture. And there's one process that does this really effectively regardless of your porosity, and that is steam. Hair steaming has been used for centuries, and its beneficial moist heat hydrates dry hair. Water is the very best moisturizer. So while oils and creams can really seal and protect that cuticle, which is your outer layer, it is water and water-based products that can really moisturize and strengthen the cortex, which is your inner layer. And stronger hair is longer hair. Now, what are some of the near miraculous benefits of steam? It increases sebum production, which is your scalp's natural oil. So this is great if you tend to have a dry scalp or dandruff. The heat increases blood flow, which means you'll have an overall better scalp nutrition, it helps retain moisture, and over time, steam can stop breakage by increasing hair's elasticity. Now, the research varies on this, but if you can rebuild the disulfide bonds that hold the keratin strands of hair together, some studies indicate that breakage and damage, even as severe as this, is not as irreversible as once believed. I have seen people invest in expensive treatments and steamers that can scald and cause more harm than good. But the easiest way to consistently let steam work for me has been to use the greenhouse effect, or GHE. When we think of a greenhouse, it's a structure made of a transparent material like glass or plastic. They're usually warm and moist environments that imitate the subtropics. Plants that need a regulated climate grow inside protected from damage. Well, the greenhouse method works the same way on your hair. I bought this great steamer nightcap on Amazon and I really love it. It's huge and it stays put all night. Now this one is made of healthy flax seed, so it won't leak over time like some gel caps will. And it's just easy. All I do is I take my little cap, I mosey over to the microwave, and I set it for about 30 seconds. Now the thing I love is that it'll stay warm all night as it gently steams my hair. It's never those burning drips that come off of steamer equipment. If you've ever had a steam treatment, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. It's like molten lava. And three, two, one, that quick, and it's ready to use. So before I go to sleep, I make sure that I hydrate my skin well. And after that's done, I make sure I mist my hair. So tonight I'm using my tricked out rice water, but sometimes I use just filtered water or aloe vera water or rose water. The point is to hydrate your hair really well first and take it out of a bun because it can be too tight for the steam to penetrate. Next, I use my clear shower cap. This plastic cap will trap heat and protect my steamer bag from getting wet. I read that if you let the steamer bag get wet, the flax seed can actually sprout. It says it's washable, but I'm not gonna try it. So next is my little steamer bag. And it's a little heavy, but you do get used to it. Once you put it on, I'm ready to repair and hydrate overnight. They don't call it beauty sleep for nothing, y'all. 
Okay, I want to add just a little disclaimer here. In the video, I said that research is suggesting you can repair disulfide bonds. So before my science friends and cosmetologists add this, I want to add this, research is still out on that, right? So there are claims, there are products that claim to be able to repair disulfide bonds. First, I want to say this. Hair care products are considered a cosmetic, and cosmetics are not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. So many of the products in cosmetics and in hair care can claim to do one thing. They do not have stringent rules usually to prove that they can do those things. And then the next thing is what bonds are they talking about, right? So there are three different types of bonds in your hair. I want to just show this little clip. There are three bonds that hold our hair together. There is a saline bond, the hydrogen bond, and the strongest, the disulfide bond. This is the bond that keeps our hair structurally strong. It's two molecules of sulfur binding keratin protein together like glue. Once an alkaline chemical with a base pH of higher than 10.5 is introduced, relaxers, lifting hair color, even too much pool chlorine, the bond is broken, and the sulfur is chemically changed. The results of prolonged exposure, either by frequency or severity, leaves the hair at first brittle until it eventually breaks. Next thing I really want to say is that I am still in a learning curve here for my hair. I have a lot to learn about my own hair, so I certainly don't begin to claim to know everything about all of the hair care products on the market. It is a billion trillion dollar industry, right? I don't even know how much money that is, but it's a lot of money involved in hair care products. And some are good and some are there for profit. So you really have to understand how that works. So what I did is I am blessed to have girlfriends who are geniuses. <laughs> and they educate me on my hair in exchange for me making them a meal or taking them out to lunch. Um, and so find a good hairstylist and make friends with them first. Once you make friends with a good hairstylist, have them educate you. Those ladies do hair all day long, all day long. And if they love hair, they are going to know things, obviously, that you as an unprofessional hairstylist, you're not going to know. So just like if you want to have the inside scoop, you want to get to be friends with the doctor and friends with the lawyer and friends with the stylist. It makes a huge difference. Also, I suggest that you go onto Facebook and join some hair groups. Those are where lots of stylists hang out. Some of them are trolling for clients. Some of them are dropping information in your ear. And one of the things that stylists have been telling me is there are new products on the market that claim to rebuild hair bonds. So which bonds they're talking about, I'm not sure of that. But one of the things I will tell you is that these products say that they can either rebuild disulfide bonds or they can trick your hair into forming new bonds, right? By using neutralizers, which is another discussion. But once they use those neutralizers against the alkalinity of whatever product you've put in your hair, it's going to trick your hair into reforming those bonds. Now, I have an old-fashioned common sense approach to this. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> if your hair's disulfide bonds are healthy and strong, leave them alone. Now, how do you do that? Don't perm your hair because that's going to break those bonds chemically. Do not color your hair with strong alkaline colors for the same reason. And if you swim, which I love to swim, wear a swim cap over a shower cap so that your hair is not taking in tons of chlorinated water. If you keep those bonds strong, you can avoid all of those salves. Because one thing I do know for sure about these salves is they are not cheap. <laughs> and the more your hair gains strength and length and thickness, the more product you're going to use to have to maintain it. So it gets you digging deeper and deeper in your pockets when you could just skip that whole thing and keep those bonds strong. 
Another disclaimer about this is I'm going to give you guys the best information that I know at the time and these steamer caps, this is everything. However, hair care products and stuff you put on your hair can get very pricey very quick. So you can use another great trick. I like to use my winces, right? And I just put a shower cap on, do the same misting, and put a shower cap on and use my winces. That works as well. It does not work as well as the warm heat that is maintained here, but it does work. So please start greenhousing your hair. It's a simple, easy technique you can incorporate to what you're already doing at night. And it keeps your curls and your coils cocooned in a nice, gentle heat. It's very luxury. So if you do it for about a week, try it and then wash your hair as normal. And if you don't notice that your hair is a little bit thicker after a week, you're going to be able to feel it. If it's not just a little bit stronger, easier to comb through, just hit me in the comments and call me out. But if any of that happens, any of it, which all of it will, but if any of that happens, I want you to subscribe because I'm giving you the absolute truth. <laughs> All right, if you've already subscribed to, thank you so very much for being a part of the tribe. Hit me up in the comments, let me know who you are, and thank you so much for watching to the end. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this one. Tell me how it turned out for you in the comments. Click like, subscribe and ring that bell for all the videos in this playlist, or just view these next two. And thank you again for watching. All right, that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs>